Welcome to Berry Pomeroy Castle, rumoured to be the most haunted castle in England, though you'll find that rumour getting thrown about for a plethora of castles. Situated near the village of Berry Pomeroy near Totnes in Devon, considering we were only up the road at Totnes Castle anyway, we decided to ditch this small Norman Mott and Bailey fortress and come and check it out, and I must say what we were met by was quite something. Within the walls of an older castle sits the remains of a Tudor mansion, sitting upon a limestone outcrop overlooking the wooded narrow valley of Gatcombe Brook, a romantic and picturesque place left from a time long gone. It's really no wonder many believe this place to be supposedly haunted, and with a rich history of intrigue, if anywhere were to be haunted, why not let it be here? The history of Berry Pomeroy Castle has, in the grand scheme of things, only recently been understood. It was initially believed to be a castle of Norman origin, however, the truth is, it's a much more recent structure. The oldest part of the castle we see before us is the curtain wall that surrounds it. Thanks to archaeological evidence, this has been dated to the late 15th century. The evidence in question was a wall painting discovered in the upper story of the gatehouse in 1978, which was dated to around this time. Then you've got the gatehouse, which is also one of the oldest structures present, which sports gun ports, which would date the construction to after the advent of gunpowder. While the building itself only dates to the 15th century, its history does go a bit further back. See, following the Norman conquest of England in 1066, the feudal barony of Berry Pomeroy was granted to the De La Pomeroy family. An individual named Henry Pomeroy would enclose a deer park here for the purpose of hunting in the early years of the 13th century. However, there are no references to the castle existing on this site until 1496, when after the death of her husband Richard Pomeroy, Elizabeth would be assigned a third of the castle and the nearby Messwidge. So we're on the same page, a Messwidge is a dwelling of sorts, a family home in this case complete with outbuildings and land. It's believed the Messwidge was situated on a different site to the castle, where modern day Berry House is in the nearby village of Berry Pomeroy. As for the castle, all that would have stood at this time would be the 15th century curtain wall, the gatehouse and possibly what's known as St Margaret's Tower, along with some inner buildings. It sounds rather comprehensive, but it's not what you'd see before you today. The inner structuring of modern Berry Pomeroy is a subject for later in the video. Berry Pomeroy Castle appears to have been a personal castle, initially constructed by the Pomeroy family and would have been one of the last personal castles to be built in the entire country. Now it's unclear if the castle was founded by Henry Pomeroy or his son and heir Sir Richard Pomeroy, however it's believed that initial construction likely began between the years of 1461 and 1487. Though due to findings of similar artillery defences at nearby Dartmouth Castle, which were added to Dartmouth Castle in the 1480s, it is believed Sir Richard Pomeroy was at the very least the one responsible for the original castle's completion. The Pomeroy family had plenty of reason to wish to construct a castle here, Devon at the time was considered Southern England's most lawless region. Besides this, during the Wars of the Roses, the Pomeroy family were involved on the side of the Yorkists, and thus, in the eyes of the Pomeroy family, the construction of a castle was required to ensure the defence of their lands. Though, due to its naturally fortified position, it wasn't ever likely to be attacked by anybody in their right minds. Under the Pomeroy family, construction on the castle went as far as a dry moat. For the uninitiated, it's pretty self-explanatory. A moat, but instead of being filled with water, it's simply just a ditch. You'd think it to be flimsy in defence, but moats are quite effective considering uneven terrain can range from mild inconvenience to outright perilous. Then there are ramparts atop the curtain wall and a gatehouse. Sadly, few archaeological remains have survived from this time. Anyway, leading into the 16th century, the Pomeroy family fell on hard times. By 1547, Sir Thomas Pomeroy was nothing short of impoverished, so he sold his estate, including the castle, to the wealthy Duke of Somerset, Edward Seymour, whose surname may sound familiar, and that's because it is. Edward Seymour was the brother to King Henry VIII's third wife and Queen Jane Seymour, supposedly his favourite wife. Considering Henry VIII broke away his entire country from the Roman Catholic Church to divorce the first one, 
and then had the second one beheaded, I'd imagine she was probably good as gold. But by this point, she'd been dead for a decade, only surviving as Henry's queen for just over a year. Following the death of King Henry VIII in the same year, 1547, Seymour became the Lord Protector of King Edward VI, the underage heir to the throne and son to Seymour's sister. Simply put, Edward Seymour, Duke of Somerset, was not just a very wealthy and powerful man, he was the Regent of England, at least until he was overthrown in 1549 for angering the gentry one too many times. Now, Seymour had a propensity for funding the construction of ambitious mansions for the elite, however, the acquisition of Berry Pomeroy was a cut above. Sadly, it's doubted that Edward Seymour ever visited the estate, and he was executed in 1552 via means of beheading, due to the supposed crime of treason. Turns out his management of the Tudor estate was deemed too poor and Edward Seymour's ambitions for Berry Pomeroy Castle were no longer relevant as the lands fell to his eldest son, Edward. Creative name, I know. It's believed Lord Seymour would begin renovations on the site in the 1560s. His intent was to construct a tall and powerful stately mansion within the walls of the site. Progress, however, would be slow and the duties of continuing construction would fall to Lord Seymour's own son, Edward Seymour, once again, following the death of the last one in 1593. Construction would carry on well into the 17th century. The building was so ambitious that it more or less bankrupted Seymour. By 1611, Edward Seymour was closing in on bankruptcy and construction pretty quickly came to a halt. Barry Pomeroy Castle would stand unfinished and upon his death in 1613, his successors would make no attempt to complete the property. The construction of the envisioned extravagant family home at Barry Pomeroy Castle would never be finished. By the end of the 17th century, demolition work would be carried out instead under the supervision of Sir Edward Seymour V. Beams and floors would be removed and the leaden tiles would be stripped from the roof as well as glass removed from the windows. Decorated stonework would be removed and relocated, if not outright torn down. What remained were the walls, and the castle was abandoned and left to fall into further disrepair. Berry Pomeroy Castle was a touch too far from major towns and locations that might grant it influence, so it was simply left behind, only ever having been owned by two families. The ruins would become overgrown with vegetation and were seemingly reclaimed by nature. This formed a picturesque image that drew in many to observe the ruins in the 19th century. It became a popular tourist destination and its romantic visage drew in many artists who were fascinated with the place. This would lead to some repairs being made in the 19th century, likely to ensure the safety of Berry Pomeroy Castle's visitors. And of course, with ruins as beautiful as these, it would almost be a shame if it wasn't haunted. From this liminal scene, stories of hauntings occurring at the castle arose. Berry Pomeroy Castle has a number of legends of ghosts roaming the grounds, or at least specific portions of it. The most popular of which is the female apparition known as the White Lady, who is said to be the spirit of Margaret Pomeroy, who is claimed to haunt Berry Pomeroy Castle's dungeons at St. Margaret's Tower where she was supposedly imprisoned until her death from starvation by her jealous sister. According to the audio tour on the site, encountering this white lady is said to mean certain death. However, you want to know the one thing that is certain? Death. The apparition believed to be the white lady haunts St. Margaret's Tower, which you can visit and see what the fuss is all about for yourselves. Then there's the blue lady. The supposed daughter of a Norman baron who killed her own child who was sired by her father. She is said to scream for help from passers-by and lure them to the tower where if they follow her voice they will fall to their demise. The stories of the white and blue lady seem to blur together an awful lot. And then there's the story of two young brothers who supposedly haunt the castle after riding to the castle and reportedly leaping from the top of the ramparts to their deaths. Many have claimed to witness apparitions of these brothers atop their steeds as they ride to the castle gatehouse, and many have reported hearing screams at the spot now known as Pomeroy's Leap. The story goes that the brothers jumped to avoid capture when the castle was besieged at some point in its history. However, we can find no evidence that Berry Pomeroy Castle ever fell under any form of larger scale assault. It's blurred out as well. 
That is terrifying. So this is one of the ghosts of the haunted Berry Pomeroy Castle. There are also reports of the spirits of children haunting the castle grounds, though when we visited Berry Pomeroy, the castle was being haunted by a very much so alive and screaming one armed with a stick, and it was terrifying. Figures have been seen through windows, screams have been heard, the sounds of galloping and other familiar sounds have also been reported at Berry Pomeroy Castle. Ghostly orbs have been sighted and images have been taken only to later reveal ghostly figures. The list goes on. Others have claimed to feel as if they are being watched. It's quite interesting really and reports of unexplained happenings have plagued the castle for better or worse all the way to modern day with people still experiencing almost otherworldly encounters at Berry Pomeroy. All of these things put together have earned this place the status as one of the most haunted castles in England and it could very well be. Who am I to argue? Today, the castle is a Grade 1 listed building owned by John Seymour, the 19th Duke of Somerset and descendant of the Seymour family. However, the land is tended to by English heritage and is open to visitors on weekends during the off-season and throughout in the summers. Though don't take my word for it, but that's usually how it goes with English heritage sites. Whether or not Berry Pomeroy Castle is haunted and the broader question that is, is the paranormal real? is not for me to say. This is primarily a history channel after all. Most castles are claimed to be haunted, and I only really mention it this time due to just how deeply haunted this castle supposedly is, and how that's intertwined with the Berry Pomeroy Castle's modern history. However, play it safe and treat the site with the utmost respect. What I know for sure is Berry Pomeroy is a fascinating, beautiful scene, even in winter. It's a true must visit for any who like castles and ruins in general. I enjoyed coming here and learning about this castle's history, and even its alleged hauntings. And that brings us very nicely to the end of today's video on Berry Pomeroy Castle, supposedly one of England's most haunted. Thank you all for watching, I really hope that you've enjoyed. In fact, I keep forgetting this is a group project channel, we really hope that you've enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share this channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff that is if you enjoyed, I wouldn't force anybody to do that like at gunpoint or anything, that, that's Connor's job. If you're planning to make a visit to Berry Pomeroy Castle at any point in the future, why not stop by the Castle Cafe? It's run independently, as in not by English heritage, but they do a lovely hot chocolate to warm up your bones on a cold day. Anyway, with any luck, we'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point, so stay tuned, and until next time, take care, and goodbye.